I'm Bob, and I collect stamps. Welcome back to Bob Collect Stamps. This is Bob, of course. Today I'm going to talk not about stamps. I'm going to talk mostly about covers. I'm going to try and tell the story of the aircraft carrier USS Hornet, CV-12, and the Apollo program through the use of covers. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a little different for me. I really, en I really enjoyed putting it together. The aircraft carrier USS Hornet was launched at Newport News in August of 1943, and it was named after a previous Hornet, the aircraft carrier Hornet CV-8. CV stands for Carrier Vessel. It's the designation for aircraft carriers in the U.S. Navy, and the 8 and the 12 are the hull numbers. The Hornet CV-8 was the 8th aircraft carrier, and the Hornet CV-12 was the 12th. The Hornet 8 was sunk in October of 1942 during World War II, and the new ship was well on its way toward launching, and they decided to name the ship after the Hornet right after the old Hornet. Here's a Hornet launch cache cover postmarked on the day of the launch at Newport News, if you can see that on there. The cache reads, the second aircraft carrier to be so named was launched today. The new ship's predecessor was the flat top whose flight deck Brigadier General Jimmy Doolittle and his army took off to bomb Tokyo in April of last year. That would be 1942. That was called the Doolittle Raid, and that was one of the most important functions of the previous Hornet. In launching that raid, it showed that the U.S. military could attack the Japanese mainland and was much needed as a morale booster in the United States. Though it was launched in August, the Hornet did not receive its commission until November. It had to go through some final seaworthiness and other testing, and then it was sent off to war. This picture was taken shortly after launching, with a flight deck configured and equipped for prop-driven planes. Jets were not in use by the Navy in 1943. In 1947, after the war, where the Hornet distinguished itself well, the ship was decommissioned and made part of the mothball fleet near San Francisco. The ship was recommissioned in 1951, however, and it was sent to New York for a refit. During the refit, the ship was temporarily decommissioned. It was recommissioned on September 11, 1953, with a new designation as a carrier attack vessel, CVA-12. Here's a cover that was postmarked on the Hornet. Ten days after she was recommissioned, this particular stamp of Sagamore Hill was issued on September 14th, three days after the Hornet was recommissioned, as part of being refitted as an attack vessel, the carrier received upgrades for launching jet airplanes. In 1953, the Navy started using jets, and this 1954 image shows the new flight deck and the new superstructure, as well as some differences to the bow. The bow was completely replaced after another aircraft carrier in the same class, the Essex class, was, well, damaged. Uh, beyond repair, and they cut off the bow of the Hornet and sent it over to the other ship. There was a second refit in Puget Sound in 1958. They added the angled deck, and a new bow again was added to the ship. Care was upgraded this time as a submarine hunter and given the new designation of CVS-12, S for submarine. This postcard picture was taken off the coast of California in about 1968, and it shows the angled flight deck. Hornet became part of the space program on August 25th, 1968. That's the day it first acted as the recovery ship for an Apollo capsule. This one was unmanned, and it was a 93-minute orbital flight. This cover was postmarked on the Hornet on August 25th, 1968, on that day. In 1968, the Hornet was serving in Vietnam and Korea and off the coast of California, as well as working with the Apollo program. We got to celebrate Navy Day somewhere in the Pacific, and this is a cover from that time. On July 24, 1969, the USS Hornet CV-12 became the recovery ship for the Apollo 11 first manned mission capsule 
on that mission's return to Earth. This particular hand-canceled cover with the cachet as stamped on the Hornet was sent to my mother from my uncle. My uncle was serving aboard the Hornet at the time of the recovery of this Apollo mission and for the rest of the life of the ship. This is the cover that sent me on this adventure, of course, and I've always been proud to have it in my collection. Most of the covers from that day that were postmarked on the Hornet have this stamp. It is the Apollo 8 stamp, and it had been issued a little before, but it is one of the most famous space stamps of all time, and that picture is the first picture that made it big, taken from the moon of the Earth. In doing some research, I found that there are four cancels, two machine cancels and two hand cancels. I have both of the machine cancels, but I do not have both hand cancels. Hopefully I'll find that fourth one someday. But as you can see the with the machine cancels, the two pictures here on top, the tire track bars are different distances from the date and time stamp. Some other space-related stamps that were used on the Apollo 11 covers include these 5-cent space accomplishment stamps. This one was also hand-stamped. This postcard shows the U.S. President, Richard Nixon, aboard the Hornet to welcome the returning Apollo 11 astronauts. The crew of the Hornet was extremely happy and honored to be the recovery vessel for Apollo 11, and they made sure that everybody knew it. And they placed signs all over the place that said Hornet plus three. That's the crew of the Hornet plus the three astronauts. Mr. Nixon did not get included in the three. This postcard features the isolation chamber that was used to make sure any space germs the astronauts might have brought back from the moon were not transported to Earth. A few months later, on November 24th, 1969, the Hornet was again the recovery ship, this time for Apollo 12. This is, though it's light, postmarked on that day with, with the stamped cash from that day on the Hornet. And you can see the machine cancel. This is a first man on the moon stamp issued in September, shortly after the landing of the Apollo 11 mission. Therefore, you won't find it on the Apollo 11 cache, but you will find them fairly regularly on Apollo 12 caches. This again is kind of light, but the postmark is from the Hornet on November 24th, 1969. The picture postcard with the 1968 picture was later reissued with the added words declaring it the Apollo 11 and 12 lunar recovery ship. As you can see from the insert, it's the same picture. Seven months after recovering Apollo 12, the Hornet was decommissioned, this time for the last time. This is a cover celebrating the last day of postal service on the Hornet, March 30th, 1970. The commanding officer made this unaddressed cover at Bremerton, Washington the day of the decommissioning, June 26, 1970. Bremerton was where she was decommissioned, and she was placed in the Naval Reserve Fleet, which is a nice way of saying the mothball fleet. She was stricken from the naval rolls on July 25, 1989. She remained in the mothball fleet at Bremerton until she was donated in 1998 to the Aircraft Carrier Hornet Foundation to be moved and opened as a museum. She was moved to Alameda, California, and she was opened as a museum ship on 17 October 1998. As part of the museum displays, the capsule from the 1966 unmanned Apollo flight recovered by Hornet is on display on board the ship. In 2009, the Hornet Museum held a, an event celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, as we all did. This is the front of the program from that event. And in 2019, the Hornet Museum had another celebration for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. This is a moon landing stamp from that year with 50th anniversary postmark from the ship 50th anniversary station. If you want more information about the USS Hornet CV-12 and its history, you can find it at the USS Hornet Sea, Air, and Space Museum website, uss-hornet.org. The museum is located at 707 West Hornet Avenue in Alameda, California. I hope you'll be able to visit it someday. I'm still looking to visit it, and I lived right there. I was able to visit the ship when she was docked just before decommissioning in Long Beach in 1970. That's my story. I hope you enjoyed it, perhaps learned something. At least, now you know, stories can be told with stamps. Please like and subscribe if you'd like. Please also consider following me on Twitter at CollectStamps. 
There I'll have announcements for my blog, for my podcast. I've got all sorts of stuff going on. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. All right. Keep collecting. Collect what you want. Don't follow anybody else's rules except have fun and take care of yourself and your stamps. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.